Thank you. So Evan Mulch uh, from South Carolina has his hand raised. Uh, if you could accept the unmute or unmute yourself and um, identify yourself, that would be great. I'm Evan Mulch. Um, some would say the Council on Foreign Relations has been and made up of architects of the New World Order, especially since the founder of the Council was Edward Mandel House a man that was very proud of his plan to convert America into a, a one world socialist state or a socialist state under the one world order. Uh, this is very well understood if you read the book Shadows of Power by James Perloff. Uh, Richard Haas, what is your thoughts on that? Do you think that the Council on Foreign Relations has been an organization made up of architects to form a new world order and to get rid of the sovereignty of the United States of America? Uh, short answer is uh, no. A slightly longer answer is the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, we are, by the way, celebrating our 100th year this year. We were formed uh, by a bunch of largely Northeastern based businessmen and lawyers in the aftermath of World War I. Their agenda was to see that the United States uh, did not slip into uh, isolationism, wanted the, the United States uh, to join the then uh, being formed, League of Nations obviously failed. Wilson, President Wilson failed uh, at that. And over the last hundred years, the council has uh, evolved significantly. It's a national membership organization with about 5,000 members. It doesn't accept any money from this or any other uh, government. It is genuinely nonpartisan. We have uh, members from polit multiple political parties, Democrat and Republican allied, as well as people who are independents or uh, unaffiliated. As Arena said, you know, we have a think tank, we publish foreign affairs magazine. Uh, we, we have members and we, we, we meet. We're increasingly an educational institution, turning out materials to help uh, high schools and college teach students about the world. We do not have an institutional position on issues. I have my own personal position on just about every issue but the, the council itself uh, uh, does not. I think uh, American sovereignty is a, a fact. I think sovereignty, the emergence of sovereignty in the 17th century was, was a great innovation. One of the reasons that there's been a degree or a modicum of order in the world over the last few hundred years, despite two world wars, is because of sovereignty. I think sovereignty is a really healthy thing. And what sovereignty has done is given countries uh, great latitude to conduct themselves as they wish within their own borders. It has uh, led countries to respect borders, to agree to the principle that borders ought not to be changed by, uh, uh, by force. Now, obviously, there are times in history when that isn't respected and conflict uh, results. We've just had the problem in our own country where our sovereignty has not been respected in the last two electoral, electoral cycles by Russia. And that is something for the Biden administration to, to, to deal with. But you know, as someone you know, who's been lucky enough to be the leader of this organization, the president of it for 17 uh, and a half years, I see uh, stable international relations as totally consistent with sovereignty. I, I, I think sovereignty is a necessary principle for there to be order in the world. When you people raise questions of new world order, I would simply say, and it gets at what I was talking about before, I think there's an interesting question out there at this moment in history. We have things like infectious disease that's now created conditions where nearly 2 million people around the world have died, nearly one fourth of them in our own country. Climate change, we've had the hacking uh, that the Russians have just carried out. We have global uh, terrorism, we have a North Korea with a growing number of uh, nuclear weapons and missiles that can bring those nuclear weapons here. So the question I have is how do we manage these threats in the world? And we can't manage them by ourselves. So to me, one of the challenges to the United States is how do we collaborate, coordinate with others, principally our partners and allies in Europe and Asia, but potentially elsewhere, to deal with these global challenges that don't respect borders. That's a fact of life. And the question is, can we develop new arrangements that are better able to contend with these challenges that don't respect borders, including things like viruses, be they computer viruses or physical viruses? So I would think that's very much in our interest. Now, we have the sovereign right to participate in those efforts or to reject those efforts. That's totally up to us. 
But I think on balance, we would be better served, depending on the details of the efforts, to, to participate them. And, but that is what foreign policy is all about. It's to make those, it's to make those choices.